Hi, my name is Mr. K. I'm your lecturer for informatics and also computing. And I um, want to wish you a happy Easter. I know we are in Easter. In people are out there with their families. Others have gone for some sherek dogo. But uh, we have some learning to do because uh, as I said before in the class that we have lost several Fridays and today being one of the Friday that we were supposed to be in class but we're not there and we have to catch up we have to be able to catch up we have to finish the syllabus I don't want to put all things together so that it becomes overwhelming for you so what I'm going to do I'm going to do a recording of the this week's practical session and you're going to do the assignment individually and submit it before Tuesday midnight by 11.59 p.m. on Tuesday. That is a quite long period of time for only two questions only. You can actually do it within 30 minutes you submit. Okay. Go ahead and do your own things. So, without wasting time, let's get into it. So today we're going to learn something new which is called... Uh, we we did the if if function last week, but then we're going to an, an, uh, expand it to maybe three unknowns to see how do you deal with three unknowns? Because it's with two unknowns, you did more. so we're going to deal with three unknowns even more to see understand how it works, and then you're going to do with the pivot table. I'll show you the pivot table it works, and also I'm going to show you a scatter diagram, a scatter graph or a linear graph or whichever you can call it there is uh, so many ways you can co you can come up with these uh, diagrams or graphs so without much ado let's get with this so here we do have this kind of uh, let me expand it a little bit we do have this kind of uh, data. This is just imaginary data. If you look at it, this is airlines, and these are the routes and the fares that they charge. So we need to put the class. The, and um, one thing I know is that fares are not charged the same in the airline. There's first class, there's economic class, there's business class. So. You have to figure out which class does certain uh, fare fall in. So here we have about several airlines, Kenya Airways, Ethiopian, Qatar, Emirates, Egypt Air, Rwanda Air, South African Air, Mauritius, British Air, KLM, and Lufthansa. These are different routes, Nairobi to London, Nairobi to New York, Nairobi to Dubai, in Nairobi to Lagos so those are the routes and the, the fares which are charged that in this column remember these are columns these are rules so we, we are supposed to calculate the we're supposed to calculate the class this class based on the charges of the fare simple if you use if statement, it's very simple. Now, remember when you have a huge amount of data, it's quite impossible to go and, and start just uh, filtering and once you filter, you copy and paste whatever you think that class is. But this is just a sample data which is just about 42 lines. Now, what about when you have a huge amount of data? It becomes more complicated. So. Let's go to this. How do we classify this? We are going to use if function. Let's say, and let me open my my word there, and we, we need to look for the class. This is just for sampling purposes. Let's say uh, if if let's say for charges because I don't know I don't know which is the lowest and largest charge here 
but I'm just trying to guess out things here uh, okay let's say this from economic class sorry they charge the, the range is between um, do you have anything like uh, less than a hundred thousand I don't think so so let's say hundred thousand two one twenty five thousand this is Kenya man then go to business the range should be from let's say now one twenty five thousand to two hundred and twenty five thousand then first class from two twenty five to eight hundred thousand I don't believe there's anything which is more than eight hundred here on this data don't think so but, uh, there's no anything above 800 so this is our range <coughs> excuse me so this is how our if statement should look like following this this is what we're going to follow once once you know your range if you are given your range obviously in your assignments will be having your range so once you begin a range you need to know how to deal with the the if function the if function we need to know how to deal with it but remember from from 100,000 to and this cannot be just exactly 125 it can be 124 999 999 in the airline fares can even be to the decimal point of cents uh, so the, this one can go all the way to 225 224 999 and this one it's the max so this so so that we can we don't we know how to deal with our 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 e function here so we come here on the here on the, the, the start saying equals to if uh, c two to c our c ends at 42 is less than less than mm, uh, less than what let's go back to check less than 125,000 125 remember it's not just less than 124,499 because uh, if you say 124,499 and you have excluded that 124,499 less than 125,000 so that becomes and then you see the the biggest problem is that the this this these quotes they are making things difficult for us because our money here is not in that form so you don't put the quotation these the the, the, the parentheses they got parentheses do not put parentheses when you are dealing in, with the numbers when I really numbers don't put parentheses. When you put parentheses, everything it is assuming that all the, them are characters. So remove parentheses like that when you really numbers, and then press it. Now you you can test and see. Well, uh, I don't know where are we is it forty it's supposed to be forty two, not forty. 42. So now you can see the areas where we have economy and the range based on the range that we have given there. The economy has already been sorted. The range less than 125,000. Now you have not come Go put comma if 
the same thing c2 to c 42 is less than the other range is 225,000 225,000 that becomes first class oh this is business class we just take business now uh, obviously uh, the, uh, there is closing and closing so uh, not all of them are business definitely because others are more than that so here we made a mistake here uh, so you can see the areas where business falls in business falls in you can see it uh, looks like majority of these things are first class eh? I don't know yeah so maybe we can expand this so that we can we have more business class that rather than having more first class let's say this one goes to all the way to 300 so 2999 this one from 300 so so that we can be able to have a larger range with that at least you can see several people with several airlines have been picked business class now you remember this there's, there's so many ways you can actually do this the you can also include here it i don't know whether it makes any difference but this is just a simplest way of make, making sure things are working but since this is a middle range you can also go and say if this is less than 300 and comma if again c2 to c42 is larger than uh, a remember all of that it means the same same thing definitely it will mean almost the same same thing so there is no difference i don't see any much difference so instead of wasting time and doing all this because already less than 125 is already taken care of so you don't need to do both worry about the range the internal range so remove that it's a business and then whatever is remaining it doesn't matter you don't have to go and put another range whatever is remaining is first class first okay close just like that so you can see all of them are sorted out now we have first class and also we have business class and we have economy so they are all already said these are classes now so this the range you are the one to decide which range you can even increase this range and say maybe 400 should be charging for this is just a sample this is a sample there is nothing serious here which is be a bit before hundred people are paying will be paying about uh, 400 it's business class the rest is first class because you can see how many airlines are you know, charging first class here the airline the fee for first class is always very high so having solved all that the next thing that you need I need to show you is to how to do uh, pivot table pivot table how to do pivot table so the first thing you need to do is not make sure you have not selected anything like that do not select anything just leave the things the way they are then you go to insert pivot table insert pivot table you click on it, it this is going to give you it is going to select the range automatically remember when you have selected it will not do this it will just select for it will pick the area which you have selected going to pick this the range automatically and you can say you can either work with the existing or a new worksheet but the best thing is just you choose new worksheet but you can choose also existing worksheet 
and now the existing worksheet you have to pick the section you can say from there pick the section there so that you can have existing worksheet remember now for the pivot table you'll be taught to sort out maybe the airline to go to sorry this one let me put this somewhere here the airline to go to rows this is the airline to go to rows you can see all these airlines go to rows because now you can see these airlines they were repeating themselves because this is the route they are using different routes so we have about one two three four five six seven nine ten eleven eleven airlines and then you're told for the the routes to go to column rows to go to column like that you can see the routes they are there and if you you need to remove these grand totals because we have not we are not doing summations here the only thing you can do is just come here click on that and remove grand total click on this come there right click remove grand total so that you're left with something without any totals so this is going to be this is the uh, the columns column that column that and that and that so here we want to classify the the class the class to go to values and we're going to have a problem there when the class goes to values like that you see it doesn't give us the classes themselves just gives us numbers one 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 blah 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 like that but we don't want that we don't want that so what are you supposed to do because we want the classes to show if you if, if it was fair you just click fairs to there you'll be able to see the fairs have been pulled there but we want the class the class is what we want to show there but we want that class to show if it's economy it's first class like that so why how do we solve this you click on this more table say yes once you click on more table you jump in into another worksheet and you can see this is a different worksheet and that's why it's very important to jump into the worksheet now under this under this let me just yeah I, I believe you can they are much more visible let me yes under this you'll be able to see here there is a range but you're going to right click on this range and say add a new measure add measure now under this measure you're going to give it a name you can give it a name so let's call it a class but make sure you call it a maybe class a class one because you already we have class one because we already have another class and then you come here and put a, a formula so we start the formula comes in equals to con catnetics con catnet this is the second one is one we use not the first one concatenate text click on this when you open it asks for the table which is range the table is called range you can click on it you open you put a comma you put again the table range and this range now you when this range you choose the 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 range where you want to the, the which is the class the range the range with the class not not the airline not the fare the column the column of the class select it like that select remember this is the, the table range is because the table name is given here don't don't go and look for other tables of yours uh, the table is given there range name is given there so do not go and start typing range if your table is not called range so make sure you type so the table name is there whatever you type here range because i've typed range because mine is written range here do not go and type range if the table name is not range you must type whatever the table name is then here 
you have to put a comma then you open parentheses like that put a comma and close parentheses that's called method, removing the limiters then you put then you can take check whether the formula is working like that if the formula tells you this formula has no errors it means it's okay then you say okay now after that go and expand your range you expand it like that you will see now there is a new column which has been created with each calculated column remember that's the reason why i told you do not call it class maybe call it class one because already there is a class there so this is the what you pull to values you pull to values like that remember when we were not when we pulled the class like that it was giving us numbers we don't want that we want to pull this to values this is now what shows the categories for this now you can see we have these categories now for for the, the airlines and the, their their routes remember why there is a space it means that that airline does not go to that route and that's how you solve everything for pivot table this is a pivot table you can see that it's called pivot table now let's look at the something called the scatter charter scatter chart come here you are given this data this data is for uh, you can see the distance maybe it's a bus distance from Mombasa to Nairobi distance and how much did they charge mostly you see the SGR they have this chart of how much they charge let's say this is the SGR charging this amount these are sample it's not really serious say from Mombasa to somewhere after 50 kilometers is 100 going like that until you get Nairobi which is 500 kilometers away so how do we create a, a scatter diagram you can call it scatter chart or scatter diagram out of this first thing is that you can come you highlight all that together then you go to insert when you go to insert you'll find there are several options here this is the chart and you see this is the say scatter that the reason why it's called you use the scatter most of the time is because you are comparing the distance and the fare which is x of y one being x the other one being y it can be either so you click on that and you can pick on either like that or that this is where you get just a a, 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 a curve a smooth line sometimes this is just you get straight lines or that you get with them but the most thing is important you first of all get with the just the scatter like that then here this is uh, the if you look at this the reason why it's 50 this is a fair which is y and this is x so the first line becomes the the x the second line becomes y now we can we can we can adjust this this by double clicking on it you can adjust the parameters on this if you click on the x side of the chart and then you go to the where we have these uh, axis options you can go to axis option and reduce make make sure you are minimum because if you look at the the x minimum is 50 so you say 50 is a minimum and then on the side of the, the y you look at the minimum is 100 so you put 100 it's a minimum so that it can show from the beginning of the chart now here we need to see uh, to, to see to see how the 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 the, the the graph looks like like a, a trend line something called trend lines so you can go there and type trend line it's already there typed trend line it's there you click on it and you can choose which one do you want do you want linear do you want exponential or do you want linear forecast so the best you can check the exponential and the exponential gives you a curve a good curve showing you this is how the fair vary that is called exponential if you want to have maybe something else like uh, like a linear you can go and change to 
linear but this is an exponential curve so the trend lines are there you can change if you want you go to like that you can go to change to linear linear is a straight showing which areas touch and you, you you don't have to move the curve you don't have to move the line or logarithmic like that or poly, polynomial and power like that or moving okay so leave it to choose which curve you want so that is all with the today's lesson you'll get some assignments concerning some of these things Thank you very much.